Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wal Aqibatil Muttaqeen Wala Udwana Illa Ala Dalimeen Wa Ashadu An La Ilaha Illa Allah Wahtahu La Sharika La Wa Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu Wa Rasooluh Khatam Al Anbiya Wa Mursaleen Allahumma Salli Wa Sallam Ala Abdika Wa Rasulika Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabihi Wa Man Da'a Bida'watihi Wa Stanna Bi Sunnati Ila Yawm Al-Din Wa Sallam Tasliman Kathira Amma Ba'd Fa Usikum Min Nafsi Il Taqwa Allah Azza Wa Jal Wa Sam'i Wa Ta'a Wa Yaqul Al Haq Subhana A'udhu Billahi Min Al Shaytan Al Rajeem يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. And surely the best reward is for those who have taqwa. And surely there is no animosity. Except for the oppressor. And I be a witness that Allah is one and has no partners, and that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, is his servant and his last messenger. And may Allah always and constantly send peace and blessings to Muhammad, to his family, to his companions, to all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, I begin. By cautioning myself and you to have taqwa, al khawf wa raja, that we should fear Allah Azza wa Jal, Creator of the heavens and the earth, but at the same time we should have hope in the mercy of Almighty God Allah. And this consciousness of the Creator should be with us not only in the masjid but outside. Not only on special occasions, but in everything that we do, we should recognize that there is one who is divine in knowledge, who is closer to us than our jugular veins, who knows what we do in the secret and in the open. And so I caution myself that we should nurture and develop this consciousness, and we should hear the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. And obey. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has revealed to us in His glorious book, "O you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah and speak a straightforward word. He would repair your deeds and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has surely gained a mighty triumph. And so, in the spirit of Qawlan Sadida." I speak to you today, because at this point in the 21st century, we as a human race are reaching a very critical point. We could say it's a crossroads. In one direction is imminent destruction, a destruction coming not only from the environment itself, which is turning against us because of misuse. Of the technology, because of pollution, because of lack of regard for the creation, not only from the environment, but also from the economic system. The economic system is imploding on us, and so the very dollars and cents, the very paper notes that we printed as promissory notes to make a promise. To somebody that there would be an equal amount of gold and silver in the bank, the papers are now becoming useless. In some parts of the world, your money can be valuable on one day, and within two months, it can be worthless. And so the system itself, which is not based on the actual amount of gold and silver in the bank. It is exploding from the inside, and this will have pr profound、uh, impact upon all of the peoples of the earth. The social system, as well, 
the relationship of human beings is at a very critical point. There are those nations and individuals who would want to separate people based on their color. They would feel that if a person is not the same color, or does not speak the same language, or does not come from the same tribe or ethnicity, then that person is an enemy. He's a foreigner. And so the social system now, the family structures are, are shaking and in many parts of the world people don't even get married anymore. And so the very uh, basis of society, the family, the relationship of people is at a critical point. Also in this time with catastrophic events coming about, there is a rise of magic. There is a rise of supernatural groupings where people are seeking knowledge from spirit gods and from different types of forces in their frustration with the material world. And so in this critical point, the Muslim Ummah, the nation of the last prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi salatu wasalam, is in a very uh, strategic position to impact on the world. Because whether we realize it or not, when a person declares the Shahada and becomes a Muslim, they are standing for the belief in one God. That is the belief of Abraham, of Moses, of Jesus, of all of those righteous ones who came from the beginning of time. And by the very opening chapter of the Qur'an, the Muslims have a declaration of independence. It is a declaration of independence from material things, from spirit gods, from superstition. And when we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You Allah alone will we worship, and from you alone we seek assistance. This is a declaration of independence. Whether we realize it or not, we represent a solution to the international crisis in the economic level. Interest-free banking, a system where people do not uh, exploit each other based on wealth, but where they cooperate with wealth. And if one has more wealth than the other, he takes a section of his wealth that we know as our zakat, and he gives it freely to the poor. If he has wealth, he will uh, cooperate with another individual to empower that other individual. And so this cooperative, interest-free system is a solution to the international problem. Whether we realize it or not, we stand as the Ummah of the last Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who did not come to the Arabs. He came to all of humanity. And from the beginning of his message, there were light skin and dark skin with him. The Arab and the non-Arab. People from Persia. People from Africa. People with a, from the northern European parts. All types were with him in this beautiful rainbow coalition which stood for the belief in one God and the respect for the family that women should not be abused that the rich should not take from the poor that the Creator alone should be given our ultimate respect and reverence and so we hold this information in our minds and in our hearts we have gems of wisdom in the book, the final last testament, Al-Qur'an. We have gems of wisdom coming from our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who did not speak from himself, who spoke from above seven heavens. But we also are at the crossroads. Our nations make up over 26% of the earth's population. We live in strategic uh, 
water passes, strategic mountain way, strategic regions. Over 50% of the mineral wealth of this world lies underneath our countries. We have some of the richest people on the face of the planet Earth. We have intellectuals. We are a young nation. And in recent study was done, it found that in most Muslim countries, the majority of Muslims, over 60% of Muslims, are 25 years and under. This is the majority. And so we are a young nation. And a young nation is a nation of the future. We have great standing armies who are waiting for their generals. We have nation states. We have a long history, a great civilization. But we are at the crossroads because there is a contradiction. With the great wealth, there is poverty. There are some countries where the people have so much uh, food, they don't know what to do with it. And if you go a few miles in the air or over the borders, there are other Muslims who are starving to death. With intellectuals, in many cases the scholars will argue over trivia. They will argue over furor, minor issues, when the usul, when the foundations are the same. And the Prophet ﷺ was reported to have said, مَا دَلَّ قَوْمٌ قَدْ بَعْدَ هُدَى إِلَّا أُوتُ الْجَدَلِ That people would not go astray after guidance until they were given the ability to argue. With the great armies standing, we are still feeling a type of frustration and humiliation on the ground. Mashtar al-Aqsa is crying out. Jerusalem, under the Muslim rule, was an open land for all religions. Christian people worship in the Church of the Nativity in Beit Laha. Jewish people worship in their synagogues without interference. And so this blessed land is crying out for that rule which allows people of all nationalities to come where the worship of God, the worship of the Creator, is put above nationalism and man-made ideologies. And so, the contradiction is there. The wealth, poverty. Great armies, they do not come to assist the oppressed. Intellectuals are not making the discoveries that are needed in the world today, and so we cry for change, and we feel a type of uh, frustration in ourselves. We cry for a political system. We cry for Islamic economic system. Some of them cry out for the Khalifa. They want the Khalifa to come. But Allah told us, "In Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim." Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change that which is in themselves. The internal Muslim. This is the primary issue that we need to look at today. Everything else is in place. Everything is in place. Like a beautiful vehicle that is there waiting to, 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 to go. It's on the, 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 the beginning of the race, but it has no gas inside of it. The energy inside. The heart. The Prophet ﷺ said, there is a lump of flesh in the body. If it is sound, uh, the whole body is sound. And if it is corrupt, If it is corrupted, the whole body is corrupted. And that is the heart. And so the intentions, the relationship of people to each other. There is too much pride. Some are proud of their color. Some are proud of their nationality, some are proud of their language, some are proud even of their passport. But what do we have to be proud about? We come from a humble place and we will return to a humble place. And no matter how rich you are, how beautiful you are, when you go down into the earth, nobody is going down there with you. So why are we proud? 
There are even those who claim to be of the family of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And we respect them, we constantly ask Allah to send blessings and salutations on the family of the Prophet Sallallahu But blood is not enough. Because Abu Lahab, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu was Hashimi. He was of the noble blood of the Prophet Sallallahu and he is burning in hellfire. So blood is not enough. It is the character. It is what within us. Hasad, jealousy, jealous of a, of a little progress that another Muslim uh, makes. They have a new baby and they're jealous of the baby. A new masjid comes up and people are jealous of the masjid. Wealth, the people get wealth and we are jealous. There's nothing to be jealous of because material things come and they go. And having an overabundance of wealth is not necessarily a blessing. Why would the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, say, I want to live with the poor, I want to die with the poor, and I want to be raised on the day of resurrection with the fuqara, with the poor. Why would he say this? And so we have nothing to be jealous about in the material sense. Kathratul ghadab, anger, becoming too angry, too emotional. Now is the time when we need to have cool minds, when we need to think straight, because the pressure is on us. But it was throughout Islamic history, it was during the time of the pressure, during the time of difficulty, when the leadership came to the surface. When the good qualities of the Muslims came to the surface, and we were able to revive Islam within our ranks. So I caution myself and you, number one, that we need to have an increase in taqwa. We need to uh, culture our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to be thankful for what we have. Be thankful. This masjid is a great blessing to you. I prayed in masjids in, in Mali and Timbuktu, in Malawi, in Zimbabwe, that has no rug on the ground. The masjid is made of dirt. And there is an animal skin or a piece of thatch. This is your rug. But you will see people with a thirst for knowledge, changing their lives. So that when we do have the blessing of comfort, we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over and over again, who has given us comfort, given us wealth, and given us health. We also need to begin to focus on understanding our religion from authentic sources that we learn to speak classical Arabic, that we go to the usul, the foundations of our religion, and we take from uh, the foundations and not necessarily from the cultures that we come from because my culture is not the same as your culture. But the foundations of the religion are the same. Thirdly, that this knowledge that we gain needs to be relevant to the society we are living in today. What is the Islamic position on substance abuse, on drugs? What is the Islamic position on homelessness? What can we provide to the society against racism? To show that we sit together, white, black, brown, yellow, we sit together, we pray together as brothers and sisters. What can we show to the world now at this critical point when racism and xenophobia is rising in the world? And so we hold this in our hearts, we need to share it to the society. We need to unify, to start to look at other people, especially those of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We need to look at each other's, look at each other as people of the Qibla. Not a Maliki or a Shafi'i or a Hanafi or 
this movement or that movement. In many cases, 95% of a Muslim will be the same and 5% is different. But, we, but if we focus on the 5%, then that will lead to a negative relationship when 95% is the same. And so we need to focus on the positivity that is uh, between us, that which unifies us, and not that which separates us. A positive outlook. The Prophet ﷺ, when he, when he would send his companions out, he would tell them, Bashiru wa la tu nafiru. Yassiru wa la tu asiru. He would tell them, give glad tidings. Don't drive people away. Make it easy. Don't make it difficult. And so we lie at a very strategic point in this time. We have within us solutions to major international crises. Major international crises. And the world that we know today, and Allah knows best, within the next few years, this world is about to change. There are catastrophic, catastrophic events. We are standing at the door of catastrophic events. And those floods, those earthquakes, the tsunami, all of the natural crises, whenever the people report about it in the last five years, they say it was the largest flood in living memory. And this is not just in the Muslim world or the third world. Recently in Poland, when they had the flood, the Polish people said, this is the largest flood in living memory. In the history of our nation, we have never been flooded like this. And so with the world in a great change, it is now that we need to understand our religion, to have hikmah, wisdom, have the balance to give this religion to the people, and to see that one of the key parts of this message is not to keep it to ourselves, but it is to share it with the rest of society. Share with people that we are not enemies of the great prophets. But the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was the fulfillment of the message of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and all of those righteous ones, alayhi salam. Now is our time. Now is the time to shine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to us. May Allah make it easy for us. May Allah purify our hearts in these difficult times. May Allah unite the ranks of the believers so that we are one saf standing for tawheed. And may Allah forgive us and have mercy on us for that mistakes that we have made for we know not what we do. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li walakum wa li sa'ili muslimini min kulli dhambin istaghfiru innahu huul ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah al-wahad al-ahad al-fard al-samad al-ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad wa usalli wa usallam ala khatim al-anbiya'i wa al-mursaleen Sayyidana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa ba'd Ya ibadullah yaqul al-haq subhana mukhbiran wa amira inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, warda Allahu ala al-khulafa al-rashidin, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman wa Ali, wa anna bi rahmatik ya arhamar rahimin, alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana li hadha, wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla anadana Allah. Rabbana la tuzi kulubana ba'da id hadaytana, وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين وانس عبادك يا رب العالمين اللهم انس المجاهدين في كل مكان لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قديته ولا مريدا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا حاجة من هواج الدنيا 
إلا قديتها يا أرحم الراحمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين إباد الله يرحمكم الله إن الله يعمى بالعدل والإسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى على الفشاء ومنكر وبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أقيم الصلاة